Over the last couple of weeks, I've been studying and trying to level up my own skills when using the latest way of AI tools. The ones that have really impressed me the most are ChatGPT and MidJourney. In this video, we're gonna focus on advanced ChatGPT prompt engineering. I think a lot of people look at ChatGPT as like this magical black box, which gives us mysterious human-like output. But a better way of looking at it for me is a calculator for words. This is a tool and the output that you get or the quality of that output is very dependent on the input that you put in. By learning how to put, give the machine better input and tell it what you want and how you want it formatted on the response, then you can get better output, which is more aligned with what you're looking for. When used right, it can be like having an extra employee in your office that can do a multitude of tasks better than humans can. And at the end of this video, we're gonna look at 50 different use cases, which is half the battle with ChatGPT, knowing what it can be used for, because it's only just been released and we're still discovering use, ca use cases every day. Okay, so let's start by looking at a very basic example and I'm gonna look at how we can improve upon this. So in this, we're gonna use a fairly common use case. We're gonna to want to get ChatGPT to write us a sales letter. So we've put in a prompt, write a sales letter for a SaaS product that edits video using AI. The response we get here is fairly decent. It's a good, cohesive uh, letter we could use straight out, but let's see how we can make it better. So the first thing I want to do is add a topic and I want to give the chat GPT a persona. So I want to say, you are a professional copywriter. And then I'm going to tell it exactly what I want. I create a one page sales letter about the topic above using these strategies. Now these strategies are fairly standard copywriting practices, use strong persuasive language, use short sentences in simple terms, ask questions to transition between paragraphs, back out the main points with figures, evidence and examples, and speak directly to the reader. Even go about this by kind of asking ChatGPT how to kind of write a professional uh, sales letter, ask for advice and tips, and then use them strategies into your prompt. The final thing I'm going to add at the end of this is a call to action. I'm going to want to tell ChatGPT what the purpose of this sales letter is, what we're trying to do. I'm going to say the goal and the call to action for this content is to sign up for a newsletter. Let's try that and see how it compares. As you can see, by just giving ChatGPT more information about how we want it to write the content, the length of the content, and what we're trying to do with that piece of content, we're getting a much more compelling product as the output from this program. This is one of the key differences, I think, between ChatGPT and MidJourney, whereas with MidJourney, there's a benefit to keeping your prompts condensed and concise, maybe only focusing on a couple or three topics within a single prompt. Whereas with ChatGPT, it seems like the output is benefited by the more input you can put in, the more details you can give ChatGPT. And maybe some of that's copy and pasted, like if you want a sales letter, you can keep half of that prompt saved somewhere and you just change the topic. The other feature that ChatGPT has is this memory of the conversation history, but everything you type into ChatGPT is almost training the model for your particular use case within that conversation. Now, what this means is it's not kind of isolated like a Google search, and over time you can actually build up and train that model to focus it on what you're trying to do. Let's go back to our example now, and what we can do is we can add a comeback to this. So ChatGPT has given us this sales script, I want to make it more informal. So to do that, I'm going to then say, can you rewrite this in a more informal tone and add some humor? Now, what it's doing now is kind of creating a sales letter which is more personable. It's using more informal language and we can manipulate it to our needs. In some cases, this might be beneficial. In some cases, this might not be the perfect way to write a sales letter and I'm not suggesting it is. But you can see here how it's possible to craft the output of ChatGPT, not for a single prompt, but for a conversation history of multiple prompts to get the exact output that you're looking for. In the blog post linked in the description, I've come up with a bunch of these different comebacks where we can add things like put this into a list, create a mind map for this, summarize this into a tweet. And that's the kind of thing you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. You could write, ask ChatGPT to write your blog post and then summarize that blog post into a tweet thread so that you can use it across social media. The final thing I wanted to go through is a different use case. I'm just gonna read these out from the blog post because there's some that you probably haven't heard of before. Some I've come up with myself, some that I've seen from other blog posts and people experimenting with ChatGPT. So one of my favorites, probably my favorite kind of thing is to use it for brainstorm 10 ideas about how to X. Like if you wanna kind of come up with ideas for how to do something, uh, ChatGPT offers an insight, which is obviously non-human, but it's something that it'll come up with maybe some ideas that you've already thought of and some ideas that are just kind of completely out there, which is pretty amazing. 
edit and improve the grammar in this transcript, quite useful if your writing is as good as mine, explain the term X, so you can use it to explain something, write a code function in C for this, so for very simple coding, like I think a lot of talk has been about like coders are going to lose their jobs and stuff, that's just not the case. For simple things like if you want to shuffle an array, it's quite useful for, for writing advanced programs, it's just not there yet. Um, explain what this code is doing, that's something that is really good for, you can use it to explain a complex bit of code or maybe a bit of code is written in a language that you're not that familiar with, you can use it, you can just paste it in and ask it to write an explainer for it. Create a marketing exercise or content plan for whatever, this is another thing that it really excels at, it's great for making plans and giving you outlines and templates, um, that's the next one, create a template for something. This is like really useful if you, you want to do something or you want to create a piece of content, you actually get ChatGPT to create an outline for that and then go through all the different kind of headings for it or the different sections individually. Write a list of possible chapters for a book on eggs, very similar, create a kind of contents. List some recipes for these ingredients. So if you have, uh, this is a personal one really, if you have some ingredients and you want to kind of come up with a different recipe, then you can just input them in ingredients and it'll spit out a recipe for it. And then you can kind of go into how you can cook that and look at the details of the recipe. Write an introductory outreach email for, so this is very much a sales kind of pitch. Write an outline pitch, write a summary for the book. This is a really useful one. So if you kind of, if I went through different books that I was looking at reading over the next year, and I asked uh, ChatGPT to write a summary of them just to kind of get an idea for what they're about. And it has a knowledge. As long as the book's written before 2021, I think it is, when the data started, then you'll be able to get a book summary for that book just by asking ChatGPT for it. Create a list of topics about X. Uh, create a lesson plan. If you're trying to kind of teach something, then being able to ask ChatGPT for a lesson plan is really useful. Write five headlines for X. This is something else I'm, I'm not particularly good at is writing um, kind of clickbaity headlines. So having a kind of virtual assistant in a computer that can kind of write more compelling headlines is really useful. Summarize this into a tweet, also very useful. If you've got a long piece of content that you're putting out there and you want to kind of summarize it into a tweet for social media, then that's great. Right, reply to this email, DM. This is another one where there's a, there's a great prompt on my blog for how you can kind of reply to this email politely declining the offer, and um, very useful. Translate this into French. Again, very useful if your language's skills are as good as mine. Refactor this Node.js script into Rust, so I'm gonna be doing more and more of over the next year. Classify these cryptocurrencies. This is one that if I hadn't seen someone else do it, I wouldn't even know that it could do this, but if we copy and paste this into ChatGPT, we can take a list of uh, different cryptocurrencies and then we can kind of put them into what the type of cryptocurrency is. So is it a layer one blockchain, a token, an oracle, or an exchange coin? And ChatGPT can actually classify these and put them into kind of link which ones are which, um, which is really useful. I, I haven't explored this use case as much as um, I could have done. Write unit tests for this code. I've had mixed results with this. I think it's something that'll probably improve over time, but. If you've got a very basic smart contract or something, you can go through some simple unit tests and it can actually write them for you. Can you suggest some metaphors, analogies, or synonyms for X? So this is one I really love, and it comes back to kind of using it as a word calculator where you can, if you want to come up with an analogy or a metaphor for something, you can just type into ChatGPT and it'll come up with some ideas for you. Can you convert this into American English? Um, probably quite specialized here, but if you speak British English and trying to write for a, a kind of a global audience, I tend to convert my words um, and my work into Americanized English. Write a witty response to this tweet. Hopefully you shouldn't need that, but it might be useful. Can you convert this title into a compelling intrigue and hook? Again, this is something that's really useful. Um, the other thing I looked at was creating an opening scene for a video about X. So kind of coming up that first 30 seconds within a video or the first three seconds within a video short, for example, it's really critical to the amount of um, retention within that video. And ChatGPT is very good at kind of creating that, not clickbaity, but that kind of intrigue around the video content that is very useful for content creators. Then there's this one that we've already spoken about, respond to this email and decline politely which I find really useful. If you're gonna get in marks and emails and you don't wanna just ignore them, then you can actually spend, like send a polite response very, very quickly just by pasting the email and this into ChatGPT. ChatGPT feels like a giant leap forwards for consumer-focused AI. And I think it's worth taking some time to learn about how it works and how to get the most out of it through prompt engineering and creating your own library of prompts that you can use day to day.
If you want to learn more about AI, then my channel is almost certainly not the one to follow, but feel free to check out the other video on Midjourney. Thank you for watching.